And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into the exercises. I'm gonna tell you about it as we go. Keeping in mind, this whole thing, we're here to be all relaxed and woo-woo, but this practice is a practice that should be very simple, one you could do anytime, anywhere, and you could do it with the TV on, if it's good TV, nice music, you could be writing a letter, you could be doing anything, distraction is good to get the mind out of being looped and keeping us paralyzed. We want to just shake to come back into neutral. So we warmed up a little bit now to notice presence. Anybody want to share real quickly presence to you? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Anybody? Awareness. Awareness. And that's a tricky thing, because what's awareness imply? When you're aware, what are you going to do with that? What? Yeah, I just agree. Yeah, exactly. You got to act. Oh. If not, you wake up. What, are you going to just go to sleep and forget what you're aware of? Then we suffer more. So awareness is something you're all here for. Awareness is that third tier. This process first wakes up sensation. Sensation that we have been denying for a very long time. And why? Because the mind, the ego, protects us. And we want to rule out one thing right away. It is not bad. The reactions that we have had and the reactions that we continue to have, it's the body's natural response to protect us, to keep us safe. And that's the nature of trauma. When we think, I should have fought, I could, you know, I should have this, we live in that resistant mode and it lives in the body. And healing is almost impossible. When we thank the body, we're grateful. And I'm so grateful for what has been, it's taken me to this right now awareness point. Well, now I can gain the tools and the proper wherewithal to move forward. But we punish ourselves and we're not even conscious of it. Sam, presence, what were you gonna say? Um, something similar, uh, but what came to my mind was I am here. I am here. Mm -hmm. Like be still and know, right? I am here. I am here. We forget that. My son, 24 years old, he escaped to Seattle to find his, who he is, his purpose. He wants to break the mold of this bullshit world we live in. And he's like, Mom, I'm just realizing what it means to be here, to be walk in the street and look and feel and come back to that gap and know when I'm not in it and when I'm back. And that's what TRE does. It gives us enough, you know, we start back to neutral so that you can know, hmm, I am here in this body, in this moment. Let me enjoy it. Let me look around. Because most of the time it's so habitual, we don't even know we're not here. Right? I, when I relearned and woke up and got awareness, I was in California living. And I was looking at like butterflies, be like, okay, that's a but it was so still robotic. Like, I need to breathe now. My husband's like, what are you doing? I'm breathing. Like, I'm practicing breathing. I was like a robot because I had to relearn what it was like. It's like you're in that crawling phase. Right? Mm -hmm. So I am here. I am aware. Anybody else? Who would want to put you on the spot? Only if you want to. Anybody who you got? Gratitude. Gratitude. It's all about gratitude. I am grateful. Right? The two most simple things in this process, besides being here and doing a practice for yourself and making yourself like a priority, is your breath and gratitude. They're free. You don't need a coach. There are a dime a dozen on the internet. You don't know who to trust. You don't know who to call. Like today, everybody's out coaching it for your best life. No, you coach yourself for your best life. But it's about practice. It's no more reading books and put them on a shelf. You can have all the books and look like such an expert, but you do nothing with it. Every day is practice. Practicing gratitude. Practicing awareness. Practicing being here. Even if it's a minute a day. It's, and it becomes your new routine, your new ritual, your new way of being. But it's got to be practice. Practicing presence. Right? That, re that means... We have to unpractice the other stuff. All the years of schooling, you get to sixth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade and nine, and then you suppress. 
Well, now we're doing the opposite. We're an undoing. We're not trying to change anything. We're coming back to remembering who we are. Awesome, grateful, co-creative, imaginative, curious, all of these things. Jules, what do you think about presence? Actually, I had a similar one with this awareness, and I was not just coming to any awareness and peace. So I am peaceful. I am peace, right? So the practice, you, what did you come up with it over here hiding in the corner? Peace. Peaceful. That's what I need. Peace. Did you come up with a presence? What are you thinking? Yeah. Reality. Reality. So reality is what I create, what you create. What's your reality? We're duped into thinking. We live in this really earth-minded, material, egocentric reality. So we forget, what do I believe? Who am I? What is my reality? Right? And we have a right to do that. Now, it's hard when we're a kid and your parents are telling you, go to school, do this, do that. But you have to learn that resilience factor of cushioning yourself enough to find safe space to do what it is for you, for your soul. You know, it's almost like we have to do what we don't want to do until we can do what we can do, what we want to do. But the mind is very important in that process. The body today is going to help you out to figure that out. Anybody else present? Still in Yes. I am still. I am here. Practicing stillness. Simplicity, right? Everything's so complicated. All right, this is what we're going to do today if we have time. At the very end, I am, I have the pendulum. I usually go over. When you guys first lie down, I am going to come around on you guys and just kind of see where you're stuck. So I'll do that personally with each of you. This instrument is from Germany. It's tuned to D. It's for that sacral chakra. It's for tuning all of that intuitive, vibrant, childish, spirited sense of who we should be that gets all locked up. It'll go on your body. If we have time, I'll put it on your belly. I will play it. It's an amazing therapeutic instrument to harmonize and change you vibrationally and shift you. Um, throughout, I will do a little bit of sound. You can get a taste of it as we go through the chakras. And at the end, we'll bathe in sound. And you two are welcome to stay or you leave to see how you feel. All right, so let's stand up. We've already did our basic grounding. We're going to work through these exercises quickly. So what we're doing is we're going to keep our feet hip width apart, nice soft knees, feel the earth, and just sway to the right. So all we're doing is stretching the ankles, waking up the nerves in the feet, take a breath, let it go. And then go all the way back to the left. Take a breath in and let it go and then back again. So we're just swaying. This is, in this practice, typically I don't do these exercises with you. Come back again. I only do this first warm up to ground myself. When we work together in a group, come back again. It's very important, and whomever you're working with, a teacher, a counselor, if they're not regulated, they're gonna mess up your nervous system because we ping off of each other, now back and forth. So the goal of this practice is for you to become regulated, self-regulated. It means I know when I feel safe and I know what I'm feeling. I can identify it in my belly. And when I feel grounded and safe and have a sense of presence, shake it out. I can tell my feelings are coming from me because of the way I'm thinking, or I can tell it's from you, the person I'm with, because of a toxic type of relationship. So you're going to be able to discern. Now you're going to come up and down like this on the balls of your feet. You're just lifting and lowering. The idea is to get a sense of tension. Seven out of ten. No pain ever. And if you feel pain, you let me know. And if you just ran 18 miles like Samantha did, you're probably not going to need these exercises. So you listen to your body. And for most of you, after you do these exercises for like a week or two, you don't need them anymore. You're gonna shake just fine without any exercises. All right, the next one's a squat. So my feet are hip width under my shoulders. I'm sitting back, right? I'm sitting into my heels.
heels all the way to the heel. Like I'm trying to sit down on a little toilet seat, but I don't want to go all the way on it, right? I'm just kind of squatting. And you don't have to worry about going deep, just little squats, making sure my knees don't come forward. I'm sitting back. So it's all in the butt, even if you're just really moving the butt. So you're fatiguing the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings. We're just working that, making sure you feel tension. And then after you feel tense, you can keep going, but you'll just look at me when, while you're doing it for the next one. It's a wide stance. This is about working the inner upper thighs and the low back. I'm gonna hang like a rag doll in center. And just let my head, my neck, my jaw relax. Let the knees hang soft and breathe. In the nose, out the mouth. Really invite that in breath and extend that out breath longer. That long exhalation brings us into rest and digest. Gotta be careful, too much inhale can make you more anxious. We wanna do the opposite, we wanna relax. After that third out breath, walk your hands over to whichever knee you want. Hang there, relax that head like a rag doll. Let gravity do the work and breathe. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. This is about the stillness, the presence, the peace, not rushing your breath, not trying to do anything but feel the breath come up the spine, open up the diaphragm, drop it back out the body, and then go to the other side. Same thing, drink the breath in, exhale it out the H-A, soft lips. And again, drink it in, and let it go. One more like that. Feeling the hips open, the upper inner thighs, and then hang back to center. And this time, your palms are facing up, your fingertips point to the back wall. Stretch through your legs comfortably and breathe. Drag it like a stroll up the spine, all the way up the gray matter of the spine, and then drop it out the mouth. And again, in and out. In and out. And then after the third exhale, I want you to slowly, vertebra by vertebra, unwind. Come all the way back to standing without getting dizzy. Just take a moment to reground. And then you're going to take your hands on your hips, push your hips forward. And we're going to do three things. We're going to breathe three times at center. Then we're going to rotate our right hip and look all the way around the left heel for three breaths. Then we're gonna rotate like handlebars on a bike and look all the way over the right heel for three breaths and then back to center. So pushing out the hips, nothing up here, you're relaxed. I want you to push those hips and breathe. Three nice breaths. Hips is where we hold everything. The psoas muscle right there joins the lower legs with the upper body. And it is our emotional muscle. It keeps track of everything that we have felt, that we have experienced. And if it stays trapped, it becomes rigid. That rigidity creates fear. And that fear creates our identity. We're trying to warm it up and melt it out. So now we're going to take that right hip. We're going to really twist the right hip Look over the left heel, feel it all through the hip flexor, breathe. Breathe in and out of that hip. Right hip, masculine energy, where we hold our financial worries. Right? We're just trying to balance the right side and the left. It's where we hold our anger. And we're gonna take, when you're done with the right side, we're gonna twist the left hip all the way around and look over the right heel. Really breathe in and out through that left hip flexor. The left is the emotional side, the feminine side, the moon energy. It's where we hold all of our relationship, familial grief, our sadness. So if 
for some women, we hold behind the left heart. We hold in this, it's called this ancestral river. And it's not something that you've done. Oftentimes we come in with it. It's something from our grandparents and their parents. And it's a cycle. Come back to center and then push those hips forward. So again, that's the blame aspect. We, we beat ourselves up and think, three breaths here, that everything's our doing. No. We come in with tendencies. We come in to learn lessons. All we need to do is awaken the awareness notice it, settle into it, and let it go. So after that third breath, nice centered, calm breathing, we shake out our legs, and the final thing we do is we come onto the wall, and we're just kind of settling into a wall sit with our toes out in front of us so you can really see your toes. And I want you to not brace the wall like a, you're working out, contracting. I want you to feel the earth under your feet. So go into that wall sit. You can even bring your feet and a little further out front. And I want you to put all your weight in your soles. Yeah, a little more of your toes. Yeah. And if it hurts, if you're at like 50% of your Seven quick exercises, simple, safe, effective, for you to shake out the stuff you've been holding, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. And what it does is these vibrations that start in the legs, they're normal, they're little tremors, because we're gonna put you back in a stress response. Like, when we get scared, we shake. An animal will run, because you get the adrenal, adrenaline to run and get that surge to run to safety, right? Where some of us won't run, we can't make it, we freeze, or we fight. All of us have a, a penchant for one of those. You're either a fighter, you're a runner, or you're a fainter. That's what we come in as. So you pay attention sometimes. How do I deal with stress? Do I stuff it? Do I not want confrontation? And I swallow it? And I get sore throats, I get vocal polyps, I get all afflicted in my throat. Or digestive issues. If I'm a fighter, I might have even more fire, more digestive issues. Or am I a fainter? I'm just gonna pass out. So none of them are bad. This What's my style? So all we're doing with TRE is we're coming back into activating this tremor internally that's going to come from our core, from our center point. It's going to shake and vibrate outwardly and it's going to find all of the patterns, long held patterns of contraction that we've held even before coming into this physical body, the tendencies that we have. We all hold in a particular spot. Sometimes for some of us, it's our shoulders. And we go like this, right? We protect the jugular. Sometimes we, you know, many of us, when we're driving or sitting and we're contracting the psoas all of the time, we might clench our teeth, right? Grind our teeth. We all have certain things. Some of us get migraines. Right? Some of us get irritable bowel. You know, like, what's your pattern? What we're doing is we're going to literally shake the body to bring the body, the belly, back into this feeling of ah. Back into homeostasis. Rest and digest. One more minute. And when we're in rest and digest, think about this. We think we got this big, important brain in our head. Our brain is here. 
This brain has 80% of the information, right? Afferent nerves travel from the belly to the brain, which is just a little switch, and it says, I'm safe. I'm here, I'm still, I'm present, I am. Whatever we just went through, we continue to support that with affirmation and the felt sense. And when we do that, the brain says, ah, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, and it gets released. When we're in this fight response, we get nothing but adrenaline, glucose, and cortisol. So you're here to change the loop, right? Everybody shaking? Who's not? Who's not shaking? I'll come sit on you. You shaking? Fine, you'll shake just fine. You shaking at all there, girly? All right, come off the wall. And when you come off the wall, I want you to hang forward like this. A little bit more weight in your toes. And all you're doing is breathe. I want you to let the backs of your legs just release. Let go. If you shake, let it happen. One minute here, let the legs release. And again, this process is not about judgment. When the body wants to, you know, shake, or your hand wants to shake, or just notice it. Acknowledge it, be curious about it. When you want to stop, you stop. You're in control. So you could roll up vertebra by vertebra, and when you're all the way back up to the top, what you're going to do for the new people, for those of you that have been doing it, you could just lie down. But the new people, you're going to lie down with a position like this, with your soles of your feet together. And when I lie back, I'm just going to make a little space under my armpits for some circulation. And I'm going to breathe three breaths here. After the third breath, with my feet together, the soles of the feet together, I lift my hips for one minute. And let the body rock or sway, do whatever it needs to do. And then you lower your hips again. Then you take three more breaths. Make a little bit of space. We move our feet a little away from the groin. And we're going to start doing two-inch lifts. We lift our knees for two inches. And I hold you there for a couple of minutes. We lift again for two minutes. We lift the third time, two inches. And each time it's a new little sweet spot to establish the tremor. And finally, we'll put our feet flat on the earth, heels a little bit close, and let the tremor kind of establish itself again and travel into the central nervous system up the spine. At any time, if this feels too emotional, you just stretch your feet out. If you want to stop altogether, you lock your feet like this, bring your toes back to your nose. You could roll over, you can sit up, you can get a drink. It's your process. I'm going to come around and make sure you're all safe. So you've done your three breaths. You guys are going along. All right, three breaths if you haven't done them. Feet are together, and you lift your hips. For those of you who have been regulars, you go at your pace. For the new people, at this point, if your feet are together, all the way up in your groin, close to your groin, if it hurts, you let me know and change your position. When you're all the way up, Notice, where's my resistance? Try to get through the resistance and establish a little bit of energy, a little bit of movement, a sway, a rock, a pulse. Breathe, relax the shoulders. And after about a minute there that you've been lifted and you feel like you have some energy, some tremoring established, You'll lower your hips. Breathe three more breaths. Making sure you really feel the soles of your feet touching one another. And then you'll take your first lift, lifting your knees two inches. That's it. Two inches. So I want you to practice. If you're used to keeping your eyes closed, I want you to open your, your eyes throughout. I want you to be aware of your room, the ceiling, you know, look around, be in your body. Do 
you want to laugh and talk and whatever, you just do it. Whatever. Whatever comes to your body, allow. Sometimes you get the giggles. That's what heals me. I had a healing, a laughter fit that broke my diaphragm open. So I'm going to come around. I'm going to put the pendulum as you guys are just starting with that first lift. And I'm just going to notice. Melting into yourself. You're just tight. I noticed more in your solar plexus. For you, you know what I told you, right? Those nice grounding. Your root is open. Everybody, nice deep breath in. Let it out. I want you to tighten up those knees two more inches. Close it up a little bit closer. Two more inches. Pretty open. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, probably from getting grounded. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're open. All right, nice breath. So in the second lift, I want you to bring that breath into the belly. Right? I want you to let that belly rise on the in-breath. It fall on the outside, but I want you to bring an orange color. If you can not see color, I want you to feel orange in the belly, two inches below the belly button. I want you to imagine a nice hot sun setting, bringing that
perfect or better. Any of you guys who are new, we're not going to shake more than 15 minutes. We don't want to overstimulate. So, you know, if you are right, you got anything happening? Mm -hmm. Just be a little tighter. Just coming up for you. One more time, two more inches. This time, I want you to bring in the color yellow, yellow sun. I want you to invite that yellow sun at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock sun right above you, and it's burning four inches above the belly button, right there at the solar plexus. That's our mental body. That's where our mind just goes and loops and goes and goes and goes. And that's where we hold. So I want you to just let that yellow just burn away the fear, burn away the tension. So then your feet are going to be together like this. And then just lift your knees, adjust your knees. And I want you to stay there for two minutes, just a little bit, and hang out and just see if you get a little tremor. I want you to breathe. That ego lives here in that solar plexus. I want you to replace any fear, any control, any worry with, I am enough, I am powerful. See that yellow, drink it in, welcome it into the body. So that first lift was all about being grounded, that red earth energy. That second lift takes us into the water energy, right? Into the belly, into the sound of D. <laughs> this earthly mind, right? All buried about the material stuff, the possessions, the attachments. We want to let that go. We just want to breathe in and breathe in that yellow light. For those of you who have established a nice tremor, and if you haven't done so already, you're going to roll your feet flat on the earth now. And I want you to breathe, settle in, let any tremor reestablish itself Come into the heart space. Just bringing your attention back into that sense of presence and stillness and peace and filling up the heart with green energy. As though you're lying in a bed of grass. And I want you to drink in through the spine, through the soles of your feet, through the nape of the neck, like a plant receiving chlorophyll. Your bones are richly, densely saturated with green, emerald green. Receive. We're receiving the abundance of love. That wellspring of love that lives inside of us. We fill in and remember, I love you. Just reminding yourself, I love you. Receptivity. 
this moment of awareness to accept all that has been, to forgive myself for unnecessarily punishing, suffering, blaming, criticizing, condemning, and to turn to love, forgiving all that has been. And as I can forgive myself, I can offer that, I can extend that to others knowing they knew no better. No one wants to intentionally hurt when we're unaware you know, you do things because it's the role you have to do. You're a parent, so you tell them, this is what you have to do. We have to forgive those. And just nurture the self right here, right now. Keep filling up with green. <laughs> off the medulla, out through the third eye. Everything lies within you. Everything. All of your answers. All of your wisdom. You don't need any content. We're discarding the knowledge that we've accumulated all through these worthless years of being told to work through these workbooks and textbooks. You've got to come into the body. Sense. The inner knowings, the belly, so important. It gives us all of our sensory information. The brain's just our motor information. So nice big breath in, let it go. Continuing to send that pink light now to one another in the room. Just stretching it, sending that compassion, stretching your sense of presence out from yourself, aware that your energy extends and is felt. The stronger your presence, the stronger your magnetism, the stronger that you can affect change. You don't even have to be in the same room. Your power, your potential. It's unlimited. Again, if you're ready and you need to take a break, you can just 
stretch your legs out. Give it one minute to integrate. And for those of you still shaking, we're going to come off a little bit into the throat, bring that vibration. So we're going to breathe and nice in breath together. And we're going to exhale with that ah. That's it. Again, breathing in, nice sky blue color, and releasing ah. There's no script. You speak with boundaries. You speak what's on your heart. I'm not trying to harm or hurt anyone. Last three breaths. It's an in-breath with the V-O-O -O boo. Stretching it through the body. Breathe in. Letting go boo. body naturally. intimately connects to the belly, right? The third eye is my connection to the universe, my connection to all things, to that sense of oneness and flow. But internally, that loop, the belly, imagine that orange energy we talked about earlier. When you drink it up the spine, when you breathe in, you breathe that orange up the spine, you bring that breath around the crown, and on the out breath, you blow deep, dark blue out through the third eye, down through the third, the throat, back into the belly, and then circulate it again. Circle around the groin, breathing in, unlocking orange. Draw it up, every vertebra, up the spine, and then through the back of the neck, around the crown, blow out the front side, that deep, dark blue out the third eye. that keeps us so below the heart and living from the earth mind, attached, worried, in fear. We breathe up, we transcend the heart, we come up to the throat, and then we round it out the crown, back out the third eye, down into the belly. And then inviting nice, crown, open that crown like a big funnel, big wide funnel, no brain, no skin, just this open access to the sky above, drink in all of that energy from the
just giving it one minute to settle it all down. Just notice how you're feeling and start to slowly bring your practice to a close at your own pace. When you are ready, you'll slowly stretch out your legs and just surrender in Savasana, giving it a nice two minute integration period. You let the sand settle. Just find a nice little clarity, just releasing, noticing as the body settles. 